mosquitoes and Kaiser. Okay. Everybody find the mosquitoes. Uh, here, here, here. Mosquito <laughs> control. It's a yellow tab. Here they are. Good evening, Anne. Good evening. Ann Kaiser, who is helping us. There it is. All right, Anne's huge monster budget. <laughs> To take care of the mosquitoes. I'll move. Okay, you'll move what amount? Um, I believe it's 166943. No, no, that's Whoops. the total of health and human oh, services. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how about, she'd, she'd be happy to take it. If okay, you, how about 103250? Seconded? Second. Uh, uh, Regina is seconding. Okay, and talk mosquito. Uh, 2017 will be our second year of a three year contract, so. Right. That figure is going to remain the same for the three years, 2016, 2017, and 2018. Okay. And you're Thank talking you. the contract for spraying? Is that right? For mosquito right. control. And we have, since it was so dry this summer, uh, I didn't hear the mosquito spraying going by too much. Uh, they came by almost every week. Oh, okay. Actually, starting in at the end of June. They like to hit it before the 4th of July celebrations. Yeah. And then they were actually out quite a bit, but the, um, they didn't have to do as much larviciding because right. there weren't, except for the marsh, there weren't that many freshwater breeding Puddles. sites. <coughs> we thank you for what you do. Does anyone have questions for Ann? Okay. I just have one quick one, I hope. Um, as far as the storage, is there any chance anything's going to leak? Where you're only using a tent to cover these. Brian, That's for the greenhead fly traps. Yeah, um, we bought a tent in 2006, and we did a lot of propping up this this past summer to get it um, so that it could be serviceable for this coming winter. That's just to store the greenhead fly traps during the winter time so that they don't suffer as much damage as they used to when they were exposed to the elements. Right. Uh, we don't have room in that tent actually for all of the traps that we do have. But we're working with public works and trying to get another more permanent structure. Excellent. Further? But there's no chance that anything's going to leak out of any of your containers or anything like that? Oh, that, really no, nice there's tent. no containers in that tent. Okay. Those are all stored at our contractor's mm -hmm. um, big building over in Brentwood. No, okay. that has Great. no chemicals. Okay, the excellent. Thank you. The only thing we have is some dread, dead greenhead flies. <laughs> okay. okay. Are you ready for the vote on the uh, mosquito control <coughs> bottom line, $103,250? You unanimous. Thank you. There you go. Thank A you. pleasure to see you. Welfare. Is Michelle here? Yeah. Okay. Now that's a green tab. And welfare, you have two sections, administration and direct assistance. The bottom line. Is showing $61,705. I'll move that. Number. Mr. LeBranch is moving, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Okay, Michelle, talk to us. Well, we're seeing an increase in homeless families in the summertime when it costs an increase in homeless families in the summertime when it costs between $800 and $1,200 a week to keep them housed. Wow. And so that, that's. That's the biggest change in the in the budget, is uh, increasing that. Yeah, if you look at the bottom line, it says where it says public assistance rent. Yeah, it's that's, rent. That's it's the rent line. That's the big one, twenty one thousand five hundred. And that's where the increase is that for for the year. Um, Can I make a? Could I ask a question? Yes, just make sure, sure we can hear you, my dear, because you I'll, speak so delicately and softly. <laughs> Okay, Steve, go ahead. I just want to point out that I believe last year um, we discussed as a committee that this number 
can't. It, it, it is what it is. Whatever she needs, she has to pay it. Yeah. That's it by law. Yeah. So I don't know if we really need to discuss this any further. Okay. I just want to make sure that you guys are on. Mr. Pierce? I do have a question about the default budget. Um, this is not a contracted service, so how do we how do we get that in the default budget to twenty one five hundred? That's a question probably more for Christy. Christy? It's <coughs> I believe it was put in the default budget because, like Mr. Uh, LaRange pointed out, it's not something that, I mean, she has to pay it. So if we use those guidelines and we put it in the default, I'm just trying to find my default make sure it's in there. But the, the criteria for being in a criteria in the default budget is something that's contracted, mm -hmm. not necessarily something may go up or may go down, like postage or gasoline. You can't put those over the default budget either. It changes because you don't have to buy the gas, you don't have to buy the postage. Same with this. You don't have to spend money on this. You uh, do. You have do. To. By law, you, you do. do. <coughs> I, understand, I understand that, but it doesn't say that, it has to come out that, that this has to be put in the default budget. That's, well, where, we're, that's where it's wrong. Incorrect to be in the default budget. The 2016 budget had $11,500. Right. That should be what's in the default budget. We're already over that in September. That's right. Yeah. And I expect, but you're to, looking, go, I expect to continue you're to go over the, till the end of the year. And that's why you're asking for more money. I understand that's right. all that. It's for your planning purposes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I understand we that. We understand that. We understand that. And you've got about $14,000 spent already this yes. year, which... I understand all that. I'm not debating that with you. I'm just saying this number does not de belong in the default budget like that. It should be what's actually in the budget. Okay. Yeah, the default budget is predicated on the 2016 figures, Christy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be that. That should be 1150 in the <laughs> default budget of that line. I have no disagreement with asking for money, and I know the state law says we have to pay it. That's not the point. The point is it's not contracted, therefore it shouldn't be the default budget. There are several items that have been moved over there recently, and that's one of them. And we can address the default budget as a whole when we get to our final review, but it's nothing that Michelle has control over. So as far as her 2017 proposed budget is concerned, we have a motion on the table for $61,705. Are you prepared to vote in favor of bringing that forward? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Thank you. Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Assessing, Mr. Tinker, sir? Okay. I see you're getting a lot of exercise finding people in your book. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Yellow tab. Okay, for 2017 assessing. Whoops. Okay. Is showing as a bottom line request of two hundred and eighty-seven thousand five hundred and one dollars. I'll move that. Mr. LeBranch has moved, and Mr. Henderson has seconded. All right, talk to us, Ed. Okay. Um, the budget overall um, is a reduction of 11.39%. Um, as you know, we just completed a revaluation. We had a temporary position um, that was funded through a Warren article, or at least approved through a Warren article. So the um, income or the regular wage line reduced by $35,434. Yeah, the young man who was helping was contract a contract employee. Right. Actually, actually left early this year, was finished up in August. Excellent. Uh, uh, the next line mapping, uh, account 3301, um, $700 increase, and those are contact contractual uh, figures. Um, debt processing, uh, same thing, the vision software maintenance increased by $160. That's the only increase in that line item. Mm -hmm. um, under uh, under supplies and expenses, of course, we reduced the data collection supply line by 500. Now that we only have one um, person in the office doing field work, um, slight increase to the MLS listing service, and the contracted service line 3,300 stayed the same. It's $100,000. Um, that'll be. Uh, 
although some years not used, and we've discussed this before, that'll be an important line item um, as a result of the revaluation and what appeals uh, may go forward in the next five years before the next reval or, or whenever that next reval is done. Um, motor vehicle allowance, again, because we don't have that second uh, field person, we were able to bring that line item back down to $2,000 for a reduction of 1900 for the two net, and that gives us the total that you spoke of. And Ed, you wanted to mention something about the regular wages and the uh, pay rate? <coughs> I'm, no? I'm good. You're I'm all good. set? Good. <coughs> okay, good. And you will notice, ladies and gentlemen, that if you look on the default budget for um, mapping for Ed, that is showing as the 8600 for the 2016 budget. Correct. So that figure is carried forward properly into the default. Okay, do you have questions for our assessing officer, Mr. Pierce? Yes, uh, I'm a little curious. Can you explain briefly for us again about how you got... I hear you, Michael. Can you explain again to us briefly about the 138.40 uh, for the uh, regular wages, how you got that minus 21.54? Well, um, in 16, our total um, regular wages, or I shouldn't say just regular wages, mm -hmm. um, that includes a part-time clerk. We have an assessing clerk. Mm -hmm. So the total budget for myself, the assessor assistant, the part-time clerk, and the temporary data collector was 197.78. This year's, uh, again, regular wages is 130. Eight hundred and forty dollars. So that's a reduction of thirty-five for thirty-four. But that's for all positions, including the part-time. Okay. No, actually, yeah. If you add up the two, um, the way the budget's broken out, it has them separate. But if you add up the two, it's one fifty-five three forty-four. If you added up the two last year, it's one ninety-seven seventy. And, and which two items you're paying together, real quick? Regular wage and part-time wage. Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Tinker? <clears throat> All right. I have no. Oh, sorry. You have a question? Uh, according to my notes, this is the mapping is split between four. Or groups. what? Well, they're different different items that they maintain for us during the year. You mean break out the way it is in the under the... Uh, yeah, well, 40% um, from assessing, 40% for um, building. You're losing me, Brian. No, I, I, the, the assessing yeah, department maintains the department. all the mapping, the online GIS mapping. We pay for that out of assessing, but it's available to everybody, including the public. It's an online GIS system. Okay. Is that what you mean? Yeah, we, no. we pay for that, though. We pay for the mapping, and that's that shared. Way. That's the that's the that's the nine three hundred. Yeah, it includes the GIS online, which had an increase this year of six hundred dollars. I'll come back to this because I know it's in it's a forty forty twenty. Uh, no, forty forty ten ten. He's talking about a copier that is in a different budget. It's in the building, no, the planning, the zoning. Okay, so that's totally different from this. Okay. Yeah, if you look at data processing account for me, yeah. I have my own copy and laser printer okay. line items to so right. take care of my stuff. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. okay. thank you for answering yeah, that. Yep. Uh, Jenny? How did one employee get a 5% raise and another employee get a 10% raise? Is no, that based nobody, on there? Nobody did get those. Oh, they raises. were removed. Okay. They were removed. Okay. They were suggested. Well, they were actually three percent and eight percent. They were they were suggested, but okay, did, were not granted. Okay. Okay. Prepare for a vote on the assessing budget two eighty seven five zero one for the year twenty seventeen. Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Okay.